Canada rolled out new drone regulations this year, which made it quite a bit more challenging to fly in this country. Along with those updated regulations came new penalties for breaking those rules. So anytime you break one of those rules and you get caught, you're subject to a minimum $1,000 fine. So it pays to know the rules and play within them. Today I'm going to share some of those new rules, which I think may be the ones you would most likely be challenged on should you be quizzed by a peace officer or another authority. So yeah, let's get going. You now need to register your drone and that registration number needs to be clearly visible on the aircraft. Not only that, you also have to have the certificate of registration easily accessible to the pilot during operations. But the responsibility doesn't end there. You also need to keep your registration information current. If you change your address, you have to update it within seven days. If you lose, destroy, sell, or just stop using your drone, you have to deregister it within seven days. Thankfully, this is very easy to do through the drone management portal, so be sure to keep your information updated, your drone properly labeled, and keep your registration certificate on your person when flying. When you're out there flying, your pilot certificate must be easily accessible to you for the duration of the operation. And just like driving a car, you're gonna need to have your operator's license and it's probably gonna be the first thing you get asked for should you be challenged while flying. I printed out my pilot certificate and I put a copy in each one of my camera bags. I also created a document on my phone with that same information. And I guess in a pinch, I could probably just look it up online if I had to. So I wanted to put in a little bit of extra effort just to make sure that I never went flying without my certificate. Not long after passing my basic operations exam, I went out and bought two small notebooks. Why? Well, because now Canadian drone pilots need to keep a flight log and a maintenance log. The flight logs are pretty straightforward. You need to capture the basic information from each flight. So the time, the date, the location, and the names of the crew members. And you have to keep that data for a period of 12 months past the date of creation. For the maintenance log, you need to keep track of any repairs or parts replacement or modifications done to your drone. That information needs to be kept for 24 months past the date of creation. And if you sell your drone, you have to give that maintenance log to the new owner. Now you can keep electronic copies of these logs, but if you're gonna do that, you have to be able to demonstrate that you're protecting these logs from tampering or accidental deletion. And yeah, of course, these logs have to be made available to the authorities upon request. When flying, you need to have the manufacturer's operating manual immediately available to all crew members for the duration of the flight. Now, the Sparks manual is about 65 pages and it's completely impractical for me to print that out and pack it with me every time I fly. So I just took the PDF copy and I put it on my phone. I also put a copy on my wife's phone because she's usually a part of the flight crew too. You also need to operate the aircraft in accordance with the manufacturer's instructions. Now this one stuck out to me because I like flying in the winter and DJI says the minimum operating temperature for the Spark is zero degrees Celsius. Well, living in Canada and flying in the winter, I'm almost always below zero. So yeah, that could potentially be the end of my winter flying days, but I think I'm gonna do a bit of research before I give up on that one. So you thought you could just buckle down, study for a few days, write the exam, and you're good to go, right? Well, it's not that easy because there's something called recency requirements. And basically that's just a fancy term for having to keep your knowledge current. You have about 24 months from the time you pass your exam until you have to refresh your knowledge. This can be done with a drone refresher course or a safety seminar or a self-paced study program that's endorsed by Transport Canada. So whenever you're out flying, you're gonna need your pilot certificate, your drone registration certificate, and then you need documentation showing that you have met recency requirements. So for new pilots, your certificate is your recency requirement, but a couple of years down the road, you're gonna to have to have documentation showing that you've taken a refresher course or some other applicable training. 
And finally, if you're a visitor to Canada and you want to fly your drone, you're going to have to apply for a special flight operation certificate. And this certificate just, it basically just allows you to fly outside of the rules. To apply, you need to fill out an application and that needs to include your home country's authorization or approval. And what that means is in order to fly a drone in Canada, you already have to be able to fly a drone in your home country. So once you have all that information, you send it into Transport Canada and you wait. So be sure to leave plenty of time before your visit because you know how governments work and they're not that fast. Anyhow, I'll put a link in the description. So if this applies to you, you can check that out and get all the information. Well, that's it for this one, guys. I hope you found the video helpful. If you're a drone pilot from a country other than Canada, please let me know in the comments below what kind of rules you guys are dealing with as well. And as always, thank you so much for watching. And yeah, you guessed it. I'll see you in the next one.